Being from NASA, I am a huge fan of Rosetta mission because this is a super gutsy mission. I think that um, what we've done and what ESA and DLR has done so far is just unprecedented. I mean, this is such a, such a bold mission. So uh, I, <laughs> to tell you the truth, I don't care. I know that scientists do, but I don't care what's happening on the surface right now. This is a huge victory. Um, we went somewhere where we did not know the environment at all. Uh, boulders, we didn't even know that the boulders exist on the comets. Um, slopes, uh, uh, there were theories about not even having a solid surface. Uh, there's just dust floating uh, over there. Uh, and, and maybe the, the landing will not be possible. So, you know, you add all of these things and um, all you can do is just smile. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, you're the physicist, I'm not. Uh, we understand the gravity is very low on the planet. Uh, not on the, on the comet, sorry, not on the planet. Um, without the harpoons tethering it, is it liable to fall off? Or is that an ignorant question? Yeah, this is a, a you know, very unintuitional situation on such an such a object with such a small gravity because... Uh, the lander is 100 kilograms, you know, it's like a dishwasher, uh, refrigerator, and, but on the comet, actually on the surface, it, uh, it uh, weighs as much as a penny. It's, it's very lightweight. So if you can think about this, any little jet uh, gas emanating from the surface can pick it up and make it float. Um, so without harpoons, uh, it will be, you know, it will be very interesting. And, and this is, an, as a matter of fact, an experiment in itself. What will happen to Philae right now? Uh, it will be fascinating to get any images or any data on this. Um, what has uh, NASA, the American Space Agency's contribution, been to uh, what is essentially a European mission? Well, uh, uh, we were um, partners on this mission, and we were junior partners, which is a new situation for us, and maybe we'll have to get used to it. Uh, but we're thrilled to participate with the ESA on this mission because it's just really super exciting. Uh, NASA is much more conservative in the approach to missions. You know, we would want to first maybe um, fly by this comet, then later orbit it for quite a while, map it, understand, and then we send a lander, right? But you've done it all in, in just one shot. It, it's amazing. Now, uh, we did contribute uh, uh, antennas. We have some assets that are unique, uh, very large antennas. So uh, we contributed this to increase uh, the amount of data that comes from, uh, from the uh, lander and from the orbiter. Uh, we, side by side, we had our navigators and your navigators trying to decide where the comet and where the spacecraft is. And this has been done to, you know, the, the narrowed down to tennis court size, size from 300 million miles away. I, I, you know, I've been with NASA for 30 years and it just, it's mind boggling to me. We also contributed uh, some um, three uh, instruments on board of the spacecraft. Uh, we have some software and we've done some other things. Uh, you know, we try to fill in some small gaps wherever uh, ESA needed us. Um, is there a difference in, in the approach? I mean, you talked about the way the Europeans do things, but I suppose uh, we associate primarily NASA with manned space flight of different uh, types. This is very much an unmanned uh, mission. Uh, is there a difference between America and Europe in, in, in their approach to uh, uh, what used to be called the final frontier? Well, uh, uh, let me uh, give you two answers here. First of all, I think that we're entering age of space exploration where um, it, everybody has to cooperate because, you know, it's cheaper, it's better, we have different talents, um, different capabilities on, on all the continent, uh, continents. So let's do it together, right, for the benefit of humanity. I mean, does anybody care uh, today uh, what nationality was Copernicus? 
no, it's important that he discover that uh, that sun is in the uh, in the center of the solar system, and that's that's how it is, and that's how it should be. Uh, now we do, right now uh, we do have different approaches. Uh, as I said, NASA is probably more conservative. Um, we're so-called the risk. Ma we manage risk, so we we always look at things that what can possibly happen. You concentrate most most of your resources in on, on so-called nominal plan, which is the main plan. We spend a lot of resources on trying to figure out what can go wrong. 